I'm going to be, I might be looking down when you see me next. Uh, make sure your volume's down on your, just on your Facebook, wherever you're looking at your Facebook on your phone. Oh, make sure um, your volume's down. And it's on probably phone. going live right now as we're talking. So everybody who's on, thank you so much. It did go live. So we're good. Um, I just want to get out of this so we don't start hearing me. And then let's make sure I can look at the questions. Hello, Gannett. Hey, Happy Ted. Friday. Happy Friday. I'm happy to be here. I'm very, very, very excited to have you. Uh, thank you for your patience. Gannett has been dealing with me and my lack of technological advancements. Uh, I, I have no tech skills. So, you know, you're way ahead of me on this curve. Well, all right. So originally our topic, and I still want to talk about that, is how to explore Orlando's multicultural communities. Mm -hmm. And I think that we should still talk about that and talk about what's going on in our communities because you are, uh, you have your finger on the pulse. But I think first people want to get to know about Gannett. So give them a little background on you. Well, I consider myself Caribbean. I'm from, but, but technically I'm from a little country in South America. Um, Guyana, the only English speaking country in South America. So we identify as Caribbean, but um, that's really where I was born. I grew up. I went to school in New York for a few years and then went back to Guyana. Um, I've lived in Guyana for 16 years before leaving, but it's such an integral part of my DNA that it's, it's who I am when I think of who, you know, how do you describe yourself? I'm Guyanese first. So that, that you just talked about how you were on with your big family. Uh, you were oh on God, with yes, family. yes. I was last night preparing for Ted's show. I tried to learn Zoom. Uh, I was actually the resident expert because I'd been practicing <laughs> <it> prior. <laughs> My dad is actually navigating that too because we've given him orders not to go out. But it, it was about six of, six of us just figuring out Zoom and talking and chatting. We were, we were on there at 12, we were on there at six, we were on there at eight, we got off at 10. You wanna keep connected, right? You wanna still connected. feel that connection and that's such a great way, which is why this tool, not everybody has to go live guys, you can still just do a regular Zoom and just it could be your little people. Not everybody's crazy like me and wants to put all this stuff on social but media. But it's really awesome. I mean, you know, it's, I'm happy that you made me try Zoom because I was trying to figure it out before I even got on because it's just, it's better than talking on the phone with your family. So I agree. I like to see people's yeah. reactions and their hand yes. motions and you can see their emotions on their faces. Yes, all right, so I have, the I have to ask pop you, in and say hi. So it's great. So you, you went to New York, then went back. What Indeed. brought you back to the States a second time? I actually always envisioned myself living in Ghana. So I just came up to the States for school and stuff like that. But then I thought, no, definitely going home. Uh, but um, politics, uh, country got really bad. And, you know, I had kids and I didn't want to raise them in that environment. So we chose to come out here. Uh, but with kids, I didn't want to live in New York. Um, love New York personally growing up there. I, I actually was a person who spent summers in New York. So I have that summers in New York <laughs> childhood, which is absolutely phenomenal. But I didn't want to raise kids in New York. So uh, we went down, we came down to Florida, went to Miami first, lived in Homestead, for those of you who are familiar with that little wow. area called Homestead at the edge of Florida. Uh, and several years later, moved to Orlando. And Miranda said this yesterday, and I wrote about this in my newspaper years ago, Orlando felt like home. Right? And it has a feeling like that. I, 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 I thought it was just me. I wrote about it years ago, but when Miranda said it, there's just something special about the people here. I just have always felt like this is where I belong. And what do you, so tell them what your journey is. You talked about being a mom. You also are super involved. You have a lot of things going on. What yeah. were you doing along the way? Stay at home mom? Did you work? Stay at home and mom, actually, at first. Stay at home mom at first because um, I my kids my kids are 23 and 21. Wow. So I nice had them pretty there, young Gannett. at 21, huh? You have very nice skin, Gannett. Oh, thank you <laughs> for, for, for an old woman that's pretty young. But yeah, I had them pretty young, 21, and so... What I felt like when I tried to go out to work, you know, it was costing the same as childcare. Childcare was costing me just as much as my paycheck. And I didn't feel it was worth it. So I stayed in and then became a realtor. 
And that, that was, that was the most wonderful part of, you know, my experience with my kids growing up because it allowed me to have freedom, flexibility, still be there for the kids, great career choice. Uh, and then the market just tanked. And um, you mentioned your friend earlier, who is an empath. I am very cued in to people's feelings and stuff like that. And so when the market totally failed and I kept spending time with people, I just looked at my checks and thought, mm, this one's not really worth, worth it at all. So at that time, you know, we all were there. You weren't making money on anything. There was nothing. It, it was it was a crazy world. It, it really was. And so my, my thought at the time was, let me figure out what I love doing. So if I'm not making money, making money, I'm not making money, but I'm doing something that I absolutely love doing. And um, that was really what led me to just diving into multiculturalism and, 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 and really exploring, showing my kids what the Caribbean culture was like, what the culture that I grew up with was like. I didn't really like the images I was seeing of people from the Caribbean. It was just all about partying. And I wanted to show them that, you know, education was a strong foundation. Culture was a strong foundation of who we were. So I said, well, if nobody's doing it, that means I should do it. And that, that set me on my journey to just- What did you decide to do? Like, it's one thing to go, I've got to make a change, which we all say and mm -hmm. speak, but then you actually took the action. So I what did. was the action? I decided to um, launch a newspaper, a newspaper that highlighted the different cultures, the different people. And it was only going to be about positive news because I felt like we weren't getting anything positive on regular media enough people that looked like us, that, that, that actually um, felt about the way we felt about certain issues. I just felt there wasn't a voice for that. And I wanted to showcase the people that were doing good things. That was the basic premise. I'd never had any experience with a newspaper really in terms of actually journalism, laying it out, that sort of stuff. I'd helped a friend who had a newspaper here and it had gone belly up, but I, I just sold the advertising. I had no experience. I went to the publisher and I said, the printer actually, and said, this is what I want. I want to do something that could showcase what people are doing here. But I want, nobody reads a newspaper. I don't even really read a newspaper. So I want it to be like a magazine, but I can't afford a magazine because it's not going to be sustainable. Right. And he guided me and said about doing a newspaper with larger font, lighter paper, better quality paper. So it's essentially a newspaper that is like a magazine it covers but how did you reach out to how did you decide instead of just Guyanese how did you decide all right I want it to be multicultural I'm going to I'm going to reach out to all and what cultures did you reach out what what um what groups did you reach out to and how did that kind of transpire well that's where being Guyanese has a huge impact on on how this developed in Ghana we've got six races so our people are very multicultural and we actually actively celebrate each culture, each religion. So uh, I, I was given an example um, to OBJ and I said, um, for me, January, January to let's say about August in Ghana, we celebrate, uh, we celebrate something called uh, Holi, which is Pagwa, which is a Hindu festival. Then we sell, which is like the color run, you know, the colors yes, 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 yes. and stuff, a lot of fun. Then we celebrate Easter and everybody celebrate, everybody in Ghana celebrates, pretty much celebrates Holy Pagwa. Everybody will celebrate um, Easter when it comes around. And then there's Eid, which is a Muslim holiday. And you'll go over to your neighbors to eat the food and everything and to celebrate Eid. So we always celebrate it someone else's culture we didn't have to be that to respect it and to feel like it had its rightful place in in our surroundings um so i think and and also sorry chinese new year we celebrated that that passed that parade passed right in front of my house so it was just a big inclusion into other cultures that we grew up with and you would actively go 
over and celebrate these things. It did not matter what your religion was. Was it hard to take that, that from Guyana and then bring it to Orlando? Did you meet any kind of resistance or what, 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 was, what was the path there? Because obviously you, you celebrate all those, but we aren't, yeah. like we celebrate, I feel like Orlando's home too, but that doesn't yeah. mean that you're, all of us celebrate everything. So what was your journey? So at first, what I did is, um, even before launching the newspaper, I, I actually took my, I found those festivals. So I knew when generally it would be the Asian parade, and I would actually take my kids down to Mills 50. And, uh, you know, there are times when they're like, oh, this is great. You have to learn this. You have to be it. <laughs> this is important. <laughs> and I would take them to the Pagua celebrations. I would take, I would take all my friends' kids to just include them in celebrating it. And they just had the best time. They well, had you learn, right? You learn that the, whatever you think in your little box isn't yeah. the whole world. And so as you begin it's to explore not. it, you get more excited about what else is out there. What else mm -hmm. am I missing? So Absolutely. What tell, so as you're, as you're building the newspaper, as you're doing that, how were you educating? And this could be a current events question too. How mm -hmm. are you educating people to explore? Uh, has social media helped? Um, and then what, do you, what are some of the things that you can encourage people to kind of begin? Because it, it's really little steps, right? If you've never stepped it outside is. your little thing, what, what should people do? Well, I feel that it's important to just move outside of your box, whatever your box is, move outside of your box and really willingly embrace and, and be open to new experiences. Um, so what, what I did was just, just share the calendar. That was the, that was the start. I thought I enjoy it. I know there are other people out here who feel disconnected. And this is a way where they'll meet people, they'll find people that are like, like them. Because you, you, might, you might not find it within your own little box, but you might find it somewhere else. So I would just share that calendar and that became a very important calendar. And now my database, because I share weekly events that are happening in the community has grown to about 40,000 people. Wow. So that was just an organic growth of that database from just going to festivals, telling them about the festivals and events I'd gone to and sharing, this is what's coming up. See if you'd like to come out. But I noticed, especially with my kids and their friends, that it, you, could, you, could, you could just see them blossom, especially when they were just deeply involved and weren't thinking about what they're doing. They were just enjoying the event. It really opened up their worlds. And so, I mean, we took everyone. If, if you just wanted to jump in and come, we were, we were down for taking I you. I think that's so important yeah. because like I've been to a lot of the festivals. I'm, I'm like you, definitely not mm -hmm. as experienced as you, but I love to go. There's so many cool different ones. And just because I've yes. never tried the food, don't know the music, don't understand the culture, doesn't mean I can't learn from it. And not all of your food you're eating people is the best food on the planet. There's other things that you can do. <laughs> Really? I don't feel like that. I feel like so when we we would drag the kids a little bit to different things. I like to explore mm -hmm. some, and you know I got the same groans or from my friends. Well, let's try this festival, yeah. and you'd go and you'd have a great time. Why? Because there is delicious food. There are delicious yeah. drinks. There are fun things that are going on. There's cool mm -hmm. markets. Most of these festivals have small businesses, yes. um, and we're absolutely the local community by doing it. And after you go to a couple over and over, you realize you meet some of the same people and yeah. you get to know people, you get to expand your network. It's, it actually helps people to form relationships. Uh, there, there are some people who right now follow every single event I put out. I will meet them at those events. I love that. It's crazy from the smallest festival to the, let me just explain one thing. Um, Fashion Square Mall halfway through when we were doing this, when Scott Fisk owned the Fashion Square Mall, he saw me in, the new, in, in there with my newspaper when he had just bought that mall. And he said, you know what, what is that? And I didn't know he was the owner of the mall. And I said, well, this is what I do. This festival, this festival, that festival. Because after a while, my company morphed into doing actually marketing and production of those fest some of those festivals. We attended at first and then we ended up doing the festivals or assisting the people who are doing the festivals. So I said, this is what we do. 
all of these fun things. And he said, oh, well, I want them in the mall because we want to target a multicultural audience. And so let's use the inside of this mall as a space and bring these people into the mall. And that just became even more fun for me because smaller events, I didn't have to worry about the cost. I could just explore what was needed and provide a platform for it. And so it led to us even doing um, a Black History Month festival because I thought that that was missing. I thought Orlando had people who would come in and we'd all come in and showcase what, what was our culture, but whatever was a local culture I thought was kind of missing and I felt like they were losing their voice. So I felt, well, let's help them to have a voice, have a space. And we brought Black History Month art festivals into Fashion Square Mall. We brought kids into- You can go out, you could do whatever you wanted. Now, I've got a question for you. What are you doing now in our new normal? How are you continuing to interact with, make an impact with, include people uh, across the board in what you're mm-hmm. doing well, with we, this new normal? Well, the new normal, that's, that's the buzzword for, for sure. Um, we're actually, trying to now pivot on the spot to, to, to learn how, how we create a, a sense of community um, with this. We've got some Facebook pages with large followings. And so um, one of them is the Orlando Carnival. Orlando Carnival, we built that to be, um, a few years ago, we had 10,000 people come out to a free one that we had down at um, the Citrus, at uh, the Camping Royal Stadium. And so we've got a huge following on our page. And one of the things that we're going to be working with that community to do is we've got um, an instructor who's going online from April 3rd to do classes, classes to get fit as they as they wait for this new date that we've set out for Carnival. Um, We're going to have some of our um, uh, costume designers actually come on and do some classes online. And then we'll have a virtual parade where people could actually come. And oh, have that's so, parade cool. and so So we're just, we're developing these things right now. Right now. How, how does somebody how- reach out to you? Like if you, if I want to get involved, if I want to showcase this, which I will, I will absolutely do, which I've tried in the okay. past. You're so gracious with all of your resources. So thank you. Uh, what if somebody wants to reach out to you? Do they go, what's, what are the websites and the things where, uh, people can connect with you. Oh, I, I thought I turned off my phone, but now we're getting an amber alert. Okay. So <laughs> um, one of the ways I, I give my cell number quite freely, it's 7421-8118. But my name is quite distinctive, guys. And so if you look up Gannett, G-U-E-N-E-T, Gittins Roberts, you'll find me on Facebook, you'll find me on Twitter, you'll find me on Instagram. Not a great Instagram person because... I, 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 I realize I'm about connectivity and Facebook is a lot better for me in terms of connecting. Um, so Ted, I don't know, I'm not seeing you now. I'm just seeing myself, which is like what Instagram gives me and I'm a little concerned. So I hope we're still. but I don't know if I'm on, but I'll keep going. Let me tell Ted, I, I'm, I'm going to keep going. So Caribbean American Board is our newspaper. And um, uh, the other ones that you could follow are our communities with Orlando Carnival downtown. I I don't know if I'm still on Facebook Live or not, guys. Let me check on Ted's page. I think I may be. Not sure. So what do I do? I keep talking, I guess. Um, Let me call Ted and ask him. We are down a little bit. I guess this is what happens with technology. You just never know. Let's see. All right, 
I am going to log off just in case it's just still going. All right, so if anybody could still see me, I'm gonna keep going because it still says live on Facebook. So Ted dropped off, but I'll, I'll keep going and tell you guys a little bit about, I know one of the other questions Ted was gonna ask me was really about some of the events that are just in Orlando, multicultural wise. Uh, so Orlando has something called the Scottish Highland Games. Um, in January, there's the January, February, there's the Zora Neil Hurston Festival, the ZoraFestival.org. That's a huge um, event that uh, deserves actually for people to get more involved in because Zora Neil Hurston was from Central Florida. Um, the Orlando Indie Folk Festival, which is held by the Manello Museum. Pine Castle, that area has Pioneer, Pine Castle Pioneer Days. Uh, there's <clears throat> around February, there's a Dragon Parade. Um, this is in celebration of the Lunar New Year, uh, the Central Florida Fair. There's um, a blues barbecue that's usually held by City of Orlando. Uh, around that time, March, there's the Pagua Festival. Um, uh, Fort Christmas is usually, they usually do a bluegrass and craft festival. There's Funk Fest. There's an Orlando Turkish festival that happens in Orlando. There's a German fest. Uh, so really when I say multicultural, it's truly multicultural here. Um, there is the UCF Latin American Cultural Festival. The Arab Festival is a really great one. It's a lot like what we celebrate down. Um, it's usually held at Lake Eola. We, we actually used to do an event similar in nature, the Caribbean American Heritage Month Festival, um, Orlando Carnival downtown. Uh, there's the Caribbean American Heritage Month Festival that I was talking about. That now comes around June, where just people of Caribbean descent just get together and showcase the culture from the different islands, showcase the food from the different islands. Um, Juneteenth is usually around June um, in Orlando. It's a nice uh, celebration of uh, emancipation for the African slaves. Um, there's also the Orlando Salsa Congress that happens around that time. Um, the Florida Hispanic Parade and Festival is something that's just a very large celebration as well. If, if you'd like to get involved in that, that's just a lot of fun. Oktoberfest, we're now around October now. Oktoberfest, there's the German American Festival. Then um, the South Asian Film Festival happens um, right here in Orlando as well. Avalon Park does an Oktoberfest. Um, Viva Osceola. Ted, I kept going. <laughs> I love it. I don't know how, I mean, I love technology. How, I can't even see myself. I can only see you, but that's much better. Okay. It's amazing. I'm glad you did because yeah, all of a sudden it kicks me off. I'm like, well, I still have a phone. I might as well try to call in. But what's okay. great is it <laughs> shut my computer down. So technically it should have shut everything down, but you kept going. It was going in live on that. Facebook. And so I thought, all right. <laughs> you keep going. See, that's the tenacity that I love. I love it. Just keep going, go with the flow. Um, <laughs> so crazy. I have no idea what's happening today. It's, it's one of those days. We will uh, so let me ask you how, so we talked about the newspaper. We talked about that. What are you doing to stay positive? What are you doing in the world to continue? Because you're obviously a positive soul. How are you uh, coping and what, what kind of pointers can you give people? Well, I think structure is a pretty important part of um, this new normal. We've got to get up at a certain time. We've got to go to bed at a certain time. This is not a free for all. Otherwise we'll come out of this just in chaos. Um, right. We really don't know how long this will last. And so I think um, at first we were just going with the flow. And I don't think that's a good way because it was, it was actually impacting us as a family. Everybody was getting up at different times. Um, as much as there, there were, we had a lot of time, a lot wasn't being done. So right. <clears throat> as much as I'm easygoing, I can also be a dictator as my family likes to say. So <laughs> the new normal includes a bit of rules. 
Um, and, and just it's general, but we've got to get up a certain time. We've got to be productive. This is a time when if, if you wanted to learn a language, if you wanted to work on your business, this is just a great time. I, I, I was telling you before we came on, Ted, that in December and in summer, I take mandatory breaks. And my family is all over the world. My, my sister's in Canada, my brother's in Houston, my parents are in Guyana. But everybody knows that December and July, I, it's very clear, July is our family time. And anyone who wants to join the family vacation can join the family vacation. But what I've found is that it, it, it gives me time to reflect on if my business is going in the right direction, if my life yeah. is in the right direction. When you stop and you just meditate and you just relax and, you know, things come to you if, if you clear your brain. And so this is a time where you could be, be very productive in terms of thinking about what you want out of your future, what's going right for you, what's going wrong, and you could really fix it. So those of us who don't come out of this fixing something, something's really wrong. Yeah. Agree. That. Um, you know, I, I so that's that's the essence of what we're doing. I switched my mindset and said, all right, it's it's like we're on vacation mode. So I'm in I'm a person though who's incredibly incredibly grateful for time spent with my kids playing board games, spot it, um, uh, just card games. We we will do stuff like that. But really, you get to connect. You get to laugh with your family. This is this is what we have. I find that it's a gift. That's that's my feeling. And so I love that thought process. I I think we need to keep repeating that to ourselves. And I don't think anybody can hear, see me. I hope you can hear me. I can uh, hear I you, yeah. It, I believe it's so important to look at this as the opportunity it is. Even though we have so much mm -hmm. going around us that's negative, even though the health, the, health, uh, the health part of it is very challenging and serious, there are still ways to reframe it and to look mm -hmm. at things differently. Uh, you're either gonna get the virus or not. You're certainly gonna be impacted as we all are. But what are you going yes. to do with that? How are we going to figure out how to do that? And so I love Absolutely. that you look at it as a gift. I do. And, and I'm very aware of who I am calling every day, who I'm conscious of how they're doing, because that lets you know who's the most important to you. And so that's a lot of stuff that, that we're, we're getting the time to focus on, you know, uh, to be frank, the world could be ending for us all. And, and we're given time to figure out what's most important to us. Right. I, I, I think we shouldn't waste that. And um, All right, so on that note, I want everyone to know that Gannett Gittens Roberts is just as real and wonderful <laughs> if you reach out to her as she is on this, this broadcast, whatever we're calling it today. <laughs> um, and so reach out to her. She has lessons that can be taught and resources, and obviously she keeps uh, positive and we all need that. So if you're Thank interested you. in getting involved, learning more about what's going on, uh, especially what's going on digitally, she's she's got her finger on that pulse. And I think that you <laughs> should reach out to Gannett. Plus, she's a positive human being. You've been a uh -huh. joy to have on the show. Even though we had some technical difficulties, <laughs> you're a trooper. So I can't wait to see how this plays out at the end. I know. That was hilarious. But thank you, Ted. Thank you for making me just get into zoom right because I love it. i'm so happy about that and thanks thanks for thinking about going this version and having us all connect this is great um i just just to let as a last plug to people just let you know we're opening our platforms to um anyone who has an a message to share that could help our community um this morning we spoke to a mental health um, professional who asked if we could make our platforms available because people who are struggling at home um, need to know that they can reach out. And so that's something that, that we're offering right now. We're offering our platforms for good use at this time to reach out. I love it. Is. So since you're in control of the Facebook, you're probably, because I have no idea how you are, you're okay. probably going to have to disconnect us. Okay. Um, and I, I promise everyone who's paying attention, we will go back in and we will respond to your comments. Please reach out to Gannett. 
you're a joy. Thank you so Thanks much for taking Chad time and, and for being patient. And um, everybody stay safe and healthy. And we'll be back next week. So have a great weekend, everyone. All right. Bye. All right. I'm letting you disconnect, Gannett, because obviously right. I can't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Let can't make it off. up. I am not sure if it will allow me to disconnect. I will just leave me tinted and I figure you might have to do the same. Yeah, just uh, leave the meeting. That's perfect. Yep. All right. All right. Have a great one. Thank you so much. You too.